Uh, well, basically, I came to Phuket about five years ago. Um, I've always been doing landboarding, which is uh, on the sand with the oversized skateboard with the oversized wheels. Um, I found Nyang on Google Earth because it had the biggest, biggest bit of sand at the bottom with no tide and plenty of wind and the right direction also. Um, I came down to Nyang Beach. Um, had to wait for the tide really every time so while people were out on the water and I was sitting on the sand watching them um, so I decided to get into the to the water sports side of it um, coming from the background of kiting it wasn't too hard to, to, to change over with sort of the very similar movements and similar techniques um, uh, after about a, a year of doing my lessons and whatever here I, I really noticed there was no safety around here there was no sort of communal group of people coming together to kite surf people were very uneducated on the wind conditions, where the coral lies, um, the right times to come here, the wind speeds, everything. So I, I thought it very easy to make a website. The website then progressed into an idea for uh, giving people equipment. I got a lot of people asking me for equipment. Uh, where do we buy it? What do we do? Um, there wasn't really much choice on the islands as far as equipment, maybe only one brand. So we brought in a lot of brands. As you can see, we stocked quite a lot. Um, after that, we, we decided we would do the school. People asking for lessons, so it's emerged from there. I mean, it's quite expensive equipment, some of it, I guess. Yeah. Um, depending on the level that you're entering. And uh, usually we, we teach you with beginner kites, and we would also recommend that you buy a beginner kite before you step up further. For a complete set of kit, a board, a harness, and a kite, you're talking around sixty to 70,000 baht. This will do you, can do you for about two years. Your board will last for three years. Your harness will last for three odd years, depending on the use. But your kite, people who get into the sport will like to change their kite every year. It's like having a new car, really. Let's start with the basics. I mean, you, start, you want to encourage kids to come down here. Um, you've got small kites, you've got small boards, you've got small equipment, haven't you? For, for That's correct, that? yes. Um, basically, what we would like to do is really push the, the local kids into this sport. It's actually one of the fastest growing sports in the world right now. Um, people are getting into it all over the place, and the ages, we can people start from eight years up. We've got small kites for them. We start them on the land first with a small board teach them the power of the wind, how to respect the wind and where the power is and where not to launch, launch and land their kites. Ideally, we would like to see a lot of young Thai kids coming up and maybe teaching in our school or maybe in the future events that we hold here be, be part of that. There is also an Asian championship that's held in the Philippines every year. Uh, currently, I think there's only two or three competitors from Thailand going there. I think one, two years ago, won the, won the, he won the whole Asian championship, so the, the potential is there. The Thai kids especially, being so light, they don't need so much wind right. and very small kites. Yes. Now, you've you got a sort of uh, website, a weather station here too. Right behind us, there's a little uh, fan, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, that's right. We've got, a, we've got a weather vane here, um, an anemometer. We've got, uh, we can measure the wind speed, wind direction, maximum gusts per day, per month, per year. We've got a rainfall UV index just to know how much sun cream you've got to put on before you come out. Basically, um, there was nothing like this in Phuket. And again, we're getting calls from people around the island, what's the wind like, what's the weather like, what's it like. We're out on the water, we can't always answer it, so we decided to set this up on the website that's accessible for everybody, really. What's the website address? Uh, the website is kitesurfthailand.com, and if you want to just go kitesurfthailand slash wind, you'll be able to see our live report that's 24-7. 24 hours a yeah. day, right. And uh, you can go up to any age, and I mean, we start from young, but, you know, how old can you be, or what, is there any weight? Maximum. No weight maximum. We've got big boards for big guys. We've got big kites for big guys, small kites for small guys. The age limit is it's endless. Like, uh, like I said, we've got a, a guy, 65 years old here. He's been in multiple operations, one including a heart bypass. Uh, actually died on the operating table, but uh, he's been kite surfing three to four weeks after this happened. Um, and he's still to this day kite surfing on this beach. And even if the wind isn't strong enough, you've got a, a bar, a beach club, Beside, right? That's correct, yes. Well, basically what we're going to do is uh, we've got a projector here as well that we're going to be showing kite surfing DVDs, which explains the basics of the sport. Um, again, understanding the wind and the respect of the wind. Um, we also have a pool table here. We, we've got some theme nights going on in the evenings. Um, people are really coming down here for the social side and this sort of kite surfing scene, which everybody seems to love. Have you got a training sort of for adults uh, a weekend coming up? We have indeed. We've got uh, 18th to the 22nd of August. We've got the IKO, which stands for the International Kiteboarding Organization. Um, it's actually going to be one of the first courses to be held in Thailand. The reason for this is the lack of the actual, actually registered instructors in Thailand, um, which brings us up to the international standard, very similar to the paddy in diving. 
Um, what we do, we bring students through, give them a level card of what level they're at so they can move forward to other IKO registered schools and, and continue their, their lessons from there. Also to rent equipment you will also be required in the future to have an IKO uh, registration card. The plan is, is to get as many instructors on the, on the island and in Thailand trained up and ready because really this sport done right and instructed right is very safe but done wrong without the wrong instruction it can be a very dangerous sport. Would it be a good opportunity for maybe students also to come along, not just the trainers? Yes, we would ask anybody if uh, between the 18th and 22nd, if anybody's interested, uh, we're probably going to give a few free free lessons, or I, I don't like to call them, but dummy students. Um, our instructors need to do some practical lessons. So we would like people just to come down. We, they, can, they can learn kitesurfing for free over this five days. I think it'll probably be more than 19th to the 22nd where we'll need them. First day is a lot of theory. Uh, but on, the, on those last four days, if they're down here and available, we'll, they'll get some free lessons. So, I'm just curious. I mean, obviously, with the sun being very hot or not enough wind during the day, can you do it at night here, perhaps? As well? um, here's a little bit dangerous with the coral on either side. Um, you do need the sunlight to do so. Plus, we've got a lot of mooring lines here for the long-tail boats. Uh, they do clear out when the wind's up because the waves are too big here. Um, but. In our next season, when we move to Chalong, um, we will probably put a little bit of night getting up there. We're going to put some floodlights out, and probably when a full moon's on, it's nearly bright enough to have a look. Plus, the bay is very shallow, and it's very safe there also. You yeah. moved.